All right, let's continue. Uh, so we've uh, set up our basic cloth simulation, and we can see that that's uh, running um, pretty well so far. We've got that nice elastic uh, dog drool uh, behavior, so that's looking uh, pretty good. So what we're going to do now is we're going to set up the, uh, the basic um, particle system. Uh, and as I mentioned before, what I want to have happen is I want to have particles emitted from uh, my end cloth here, um, and it's the actual particles that we're, uh, we're going to render. Um, by doing that, uh, we kind of get the best of both worlds. We get the, uh, the movement, the relatively easy to control uh, movement and behavior of our uh, end cloth structure, um, but we also get to break off particles like we would there when uh, we get that whiplash effect. It'll be relatively easy to get the uh, particles to come flying off. Um, all right, so let's set that up. All right, now, I've got two different end cloth surfaces here, and I could certainly emit from each of these uh, end cloth surfaces, um, but I want the end cloth um, to be uh, a goal for the particles, because I want the particles to sit on the, uh, um, the, uh, the surface. Um, and uh, I want to use just one single uh, particle object, um, so having uh, two different cloth objects and one particle object could complicate things. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to combine these two uh, uh, cloth objects into a single poly mesh. Let me just select them again, switch over to polygons, combine them. All right, so now I just have a single poly surface, so there's my poly surface, and I'm going to add an emitter to that. End particles, create end particles. Um, I want to make sure that I have water selected as my preset that uh, will set things up uh, nicely and emit from object. Uh, there we go. I tend to work at pretty much the um, uh, the defaults here. You can change all these attributes after the fact. Um, I'm going to make sure that need parent UVs is turned on because I want each particle as it's born to know what the UV coordinates of its emitting surface were. So let's say create. So there's my emitter, parented under my surface, uh, and there, my particle object. All right, so if we hit play, see we got particles coming off of our surface. If we increase our rate, say, to 100, we'll really see those particles coming off the surface. Okay, flying off right now, um, which we don't want. Uh, a couple things we can do. I can set my emitter. Let's see. The rate, oh, that's... Turn the rate back down. Ah, let's leave the rate up at 100 for a minute. Um, and do, 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 do. yeah, my actually my speed is already set to, to zero. Um, so all right, we'll leave that for a second. All right. So like I said, like we saw, the particles are flying off of the surface uh, right now. So I want these particles to stick to the surface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell Maya to um, have the particles stick to the surface as a goal. So I'm going to select my particle, select my surface, go to end particles, and select goal. So now when I play this, particles stick to that. Uh, now this is almost the effect that I'm looking for, um, and it's kind of neat. Just by uh, this, the way it's set up right now, um, if we were going for that more sort of you know, frothing rabid dog um, or monster dog kind of situation. This would be pretty cool. We could uh, work with something like this. Uh, in my case, though, I want a more refined effect. I want just like that, that narrow, very discreet drop of uh, drool. So this is a little bit more chaotic uh, than I want. Um, what's happening right now is the particles are being emitted and they're trying to stick to the surface, but they're trying to stick to the vertices on the surface. That's not what I want. What I want is I want the particles to stick to the point where they were born. Um, so, um, close to that, but not quite. So, let me just uh, rewind that. Oh, and actually, one other thing that's happening. You notice that the, uh, the cloth object itself is getting kind of beat up by the particles. This is kind of neat. You can use that to your, uh, um, to your advantage. Uh, in this case, it's kind of working against me. Um, so I'm going to turn that off. So at least for now, I'm going to turn off collisions for my particles. So now they're not colliding with the cloth object. Their weight is still affecting the, the uh, cloth object, which is also kind of neat. Um, I think it's very cool the way uh, end particles and end cloth sort of work with each other. Um, yeah, that's looking good. Uh, okay, so, uh, so I got my particles sticking to my mesh 
but they're not exactly doing what I want them to do. They, I want them to stick to the, the point that they were born at. Um, so, make sure I get my particle selected here, uh, turn collisions off. So I'm going to go down to the Per Particle Array Attributes section. And you notice that uh, I've got parent U and parent V attributes. And again, they're there because when I created the emitter, I had need parent U and V uh, option turned on. So this is good. I'm going to need these guys. But I'm also going to need a goal U and goal V attribute. So I'm going to go to the Add Dynamic Attribute section, open up General, go to Particle, and then find, there they are, goal U, goal V. So I selected goal V first, add it, goal U. Add it, and the reason I picked them in uh, sort of the opposite order um, was so that they'll appear in the correct order here in, in the window. Um, all right, so now goal U and goal V and parent U and parent V, uh, I'm going to uh, drive with uh, expressions. So go with uh, creation expression, and I just happen to have my creation expression right here, so you don't have to watch me type them out. So there's my creation expression, and all this creation expression is saying is that the specific goal u for a particle equals its parent u value, and its goal v equals its parent v. So all that means is that, uh, that the particles will stick to the plane on the surface where they were born, which is exactly what I want. So let's create that, and I believe I also have runtime expression there. Ah, well actually, Let's just stick with that for a second. So now, if I rewind and play, now you see, ah, okay, much better. Notice how my particles aren't bouncing around like they were before? Now they're sticking where they were born. And again, it's kind of a, it's looking pretty good. Um, all right. So far, so good. Uh, now I'm going to add something here, my runtime expression. Runtime expression here, goal u equals goal u plus 0.01. What that means is, um, because it's a runtime expression, it'll get calculated once per particle every frame. So uh, my particles uh, will move forward in the, the U direction of the surface, 0 0.01 per frame. Grab that. Go to the expression editor. There we go. Runtime before dynamics. Paste that. Make that a little wider, easy to see. So there we go. Goal U equals goal U plus 0 0.1. Create that. Now I play. It's a little hard to see, but the particles are actually moving down along the surface, which is kind of neat. All right, and you can see they're all starting to accumulate down at the bottom here. Again, this is almost the effect that I'm looking for, but uh, not quite. Uh, all right, now I want to modify this a little bit because I don't want, actually let's go back to this for a second, I don't want the particles emitting all along the surface. I could certainly work this way if I wanted to. I could uh, emit all along the surface and then set the initial state for the particles, um, but that's not what I want. I actually want to see the particles coming down here in uh, a stream, um, so I'm going to use a expression to help me set that up. Uh, all right, so that's the initial setup for the expression and it's most basic form. Uh, I'm going to add something to my creation expression. I'm going to add an if statement. What this if statement does, it says if the parent u value is greater than 0 0.25, and remember the surface goes from 0 to 1 in terms of parameterization. So this is just the first quarter of the surface. So if a particle is born outside of that first quarter area, then I automatically set its lifespan um, to 0. Let me just make sure I've set, uh, let's go to the lifespan, make sure I set that to lifespan pp, otherwise the expression uh, uh, won't do anything. Expression, there we go, let me add that. Edit that, make sure it took. All right, so now if I play it, uh, very nice. Now you notice that the particles if they get born anywhere beyond here, um, they die instantly. Um, so now we can see our particles coming down, which is cool. All right. Um, so this is working uh, pretty much the way I want it to. Uh, now, one thing you notice that the particles, they're clumping up a little bit. 
which again, if that's what I wanted, if I wanted more of a frothy, rabid dog, that would be fine. Uh, but in this case, I don't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little adjustment to my particle here. So I'm going to go to liquid simulation and incompressibility. I'm going to turn that way down. I'm going to set it to 0 0.01 because um, I don't mind if my particles overlap each other. So if we play now, see how we're getting a much nicer, much more discreet um, particle there. Actually, if we take that down even more, there we go. Very nice. So now, you see I'm getting this very straight line. Uh, again, all depends what you're going for. Um, in this case, I want to have a very nice, discreet, um, straight line there, so that's, uh, that's looking good. I like that. Um, okay, now, notice the speed at which my, my particles are uh, going here. It's, uh, you know, it's fine, but I don't have any uh, direct control over it unless I go into my expression. Um, so, what I'm going to do is find my drool control. Where's my drool control? Is it going down there? I don't remember putting my drool control down there. Um, Alright, so here's my drool control. And as you remember, I put the two stretch attributes on that. So I'm going to add a couple of attributes to this. Um, I'm going to add... Add attribute... Add attribute. So I'm going to call, add a rate attribute, which I'll use to control the, um, the emission rate. I'll connect that to my uh, emitter. And I'm going to add a forward attribute. Um, forward, I'm going to set my default to 0 0.01. Add that. There we go. I should have set a, a default for the rate. Oh, it doesn't really matter that much. Set that to 100. Um, all right, now I'll just hook these up. So again, got Jewel, Control Selected, Window, General Editor, Connection Editor. There's Rate. Uh, I'll select my emitter. Reload the right. And connect Rate to Rate, which is good. And uh, Forward. All right. So now, if I select my drill control, if we play, all right, that's the same uh, rate that we had before. I can change that. Let's say, let's bring it way down. Let's say I change my rate to one. Now you can see, eh, not so many particles. There's one. There we go. So you can see, yeah, I've turned, you know, that's because I've turned my rate down really low. Let's bring that back up. There we go. Nice. All right, now, to take advantage of this forward attribute, um, I can't use the connection editor. I've got to incorporate that into my uh, expression. So, let's go back to my particle. And runtime before dynamics. All right, so this is the expression I've got so far. Um, so the goal U is being modified right now, right now by this uh, arbitrary value, 0 0.01. Well, what I want to do is I want to replace this uh, number, um, which would be a pain in the neck to you know, go into um, in the expression editor if I wanted to change it. I want to uh, incorporate the value that I set on my drool control in here. Uh, so to do that, again, I've got the set up here. Incorporate this into my runtime expression. So what I'm doing now is I'm creating a variable um, forward, and I'm just finding out. I'm using get adder to get the attribute value of my drill control forward attribute. Put that into my variable forward, and then I'll just pop forward in here. Edit that. That should be good. All right, so now, hit play, the particles move, just like they did before. Well, that's because my forward attribute is set to 
0.01 just like we had before. Well, if I change that to, say, uh, 0 0.05, now they'll move five times faster. There we go. Nice. Nice thing about this is, um, well, there's a couple of nice things. One is the attribute is really easy to get to. It's on my control here. Um, the other is I can animate it. I can change this. They can be going slow. They can be going fast. I can even make them go backwards. Um, if I change this to a negative value, I can have, uh, or I can start with a positive value, have them come down, change it to a negative value, have them go back up. Um, it's very, very flexible this way. All right, but I'll just put that back to 0 0.01 for now. And that's looking uh, pretty good. And um, yeah, so that is the basic particle system um, the way I want it working. Obviously, there's a little bit more I can do with that, but that's the basic particle system the way I want it.